Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through new features in Tableau 10. In this particular video, I'm going to be focusing on the changes to the ways in which you can design visualizations. I have a workbook prepared, which takes you through some of these new features. And the first feature I want to focus on is the highlighter. Now, in previous versions of Tableau, if I wanted to maybe look for a particular product in a very busy data set, uh, I would have normally used the wildcard search as I am now. And what that would have done is would have filtered out the rest of the data set. So I wouldn't be able to see all my products in the Acme range uh, in context of all my data. Now, there would be other ways of which you could have done this. You could have done this possibly using a blend, but that would have only really worked in situations where you needed to aggregate the data. It would have been quite tricky to do the same effect as you could if you could just highlight particular sets of data. And so the way highlighting works is like so. But how do I highlight a particular group of products using a filter? Now, that wasn't possible until in Tableau 10, they introduced the highlighter. And so if I show the highlighter and I go in here, you can see that here I've already searched for Nokia. If I come back, I can search for a different product range. And this is quite nice because this allows for a much more interactive sort of search experience within your data set. And secondly, it allows you to see trends within a very, very busy data set and see what subsets of that particular product range are doing. So here I can immediately see that these two products are well above the norm for Nokia. If I go to another range like Xerox, I can see that there's an outlier here that I would never have been able to see if I was just looking at the whole data set. And equally, if I search for it, it would have been distorted somewhat. The axis would have been distorted. So I wouldn't have been able to easily see that this particular item was an outlier. So I think this is a really, really great feature and it's gonna help uh, make for much, much better dashboards. Okay, the other feature is parameters and filters in Tableau 10. Now these have just had a, a facelift essentially. So uh, if I change this to a compact list, you'll see that the design is more or less in line with Tableau 10. And the other thing about these is that I sort of feel like they're performing a lot quicker. If I just show you now, um, this might be because I've, I've cached some of these, but if I just keep clicking through, it's still very, very, very fast. Um, and so these are working really, really nice and uh, parameters to have had this sort of change and it sits a little bit better on the dashboard as well and you can style them a lot easier as well, which is great. Now, this next feature is the non-modal table calculation window. Uh, and this is a difficult feature to explain, so I'll just show it to you. So in previous versions of Tableau, when you wanted to use table calculations that were a little bit more complex, uh, then basically you used to have to go to quick table calculation, choose the one you'd like. In this case, I've chosen the percent of total. And then following that, I would then go to compute using and I'd choose the way in which I wanted the calculation to be done. But there was no real feedback to let me know that it was being done in the correct way. Now, if you select edit table calculation, you get this new window. And this new window is great for two reasons. Firstly, it's non-modal. So I can still interact with my visualization and I can even bring up the calculated field option. So these are normally two things you want to do at the same time, but for whatever reason you can't up until Tableau 10. So now I can edit my calculation and simultaneously uh, change the way in which my table calculation is working. And I think that's such a powerful feature. Number two, it now highlights the table to show me the direction and order in which it's doing the calculation. And again, this is absolutely phenomenal because it very, very clearly shows the user or the developer what is happening with their calculation. And this was so hard to explain in the past, although Tableau have some great documentation on this. Uh, when you're in the flow of visual analysis, um, it was very, very hard sometimes to fully understand what was going on very, very, very quickly. And even when you choose specific dimensions, Tableau allows you to sort of build this out and select the areas that you want to be using for your calculation. And again, you still have your typical options here and you can sort in different ways. So I think that's a really, really neat addition to Tableau 10. This next feature is called Mark Sizing Control. 
And I've used the profit bin example here, but it's a very subtle change. So let me just try and explain this. Um, profit bins are essentially like buckets. You're putting different sales or different profits or different items with certain profits in certain profit buckets. So here I have my zero to 141, my 141 to 282, and it looks like the binomial curve. Now, if I change this to a continuous scale, I get a continuous scale along the bottom. But when I change the sizing, you can see that all I'm really doing is changing the size of the bar. It's not really reflecting the continuous nature of the axes. You know, this bar should really take up the zero to 141 range. And that is what this new option is about. When I select fixed, note that I no longer have the slider and I have this ability to basically make the bar fit that particular bucket. So from here to here is actually 141. And as soon as it hits 141, it changes to the next one. Now, this is a great feature for two reasons. It allows you to build something called a Marimako chart. And this is a new type of chart that you can now achieve using this functionality. And there's some great blog posts on the Tableau blog about that. And the second thing is you have a little bit more control about what's happening. You can even align your visualization or your bars to a particular position. And so I'm looking forward to seeing the interesting ways in which this can be manipulated. Normally, these sort of very subtle features allow you to do some very interesting hacks to much bigger, much more flexible data sets. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what we can build with that. Now, the last feature here is mapping. Uh, and uh, you can see here Tableau has applied the default color set. It looks like all my cells are in the UK. So I'm actually just going to tell the sales of color just so that I can see all my states and countries very clearly. And you can see here that Tableau has uh, created a fill map with uh, where I have sales in particular states. And that's all the level of detail that this is in. If I take uh, states off, then obviously the fill map becomes a country one. So let me put state back in. And what I want to do is create a custom sales region because uh, my sales region don't necessarily map to states or countries. So I'm just going to select a few. And when I've done that, I'm just going to group them. And I'm going to group the state and country together. And notice that it creates this grouping here on the right. And more subtly, it created this item here. Uh, now, if I carry on grouping, you'll notice that all I'm doing is adding to this particular grouping. And that's me done. So those are my four sales regions. Now, I want to remove the boundary between the countries and the state. And with that in mind, I can just start removing state. And you can see that the state boundaries disappear. But I still have country boundaries in the background. So I'm just going to remove that again. And watch what happens. Tableau uses the newly created group to form the new boundaries. And I think that's absolutely fantastic because here you can very, very clearly see that I've been able to create my custom sales regions. And better yet, I can actually use this custom data in my own data source. So I can say, okay, here are my sales regions and here's how the sales are doing across those regions. So this is a really, really nice change to mapping. And I think um, this is obviously going to improve over time. Uh, it, it only really works where Tableau have the le relevant data to be able to do this. So it might not always work in your country or region, but in most cases, uh, it should be fine. And when you're visualizing on Tableau Public, I'm sure it's going to enable people to create much, much more exciting uh, mapping context it's for their visualization. So that's it. Those are all the features uh, that and relate to visualizations. Um, in the next video, I'm going to be focusing in on mobile dashboard design and how to design for mobile devices. Uh, and then in my last video, I'm going to be looking at changes to data and the new ways in which you can interact with data before creating a visualization. Thanks for listening and enjoy.